Hello everybody, hope we're doing well, hope we're having a fantastic day. So, the topic of today's video is Smite 2. This is a game that is very near and dear to my heart. Hundreds upon hundreds of hours playing it. Uh, I've been playing it almost ever since I was in elementary school. And something I love to do with this game is I love teaching new people how to play. It is a passion of mine and I enjoy doing it so much. Whether that's people in my Discord, people who come into my streams, or even on Smite's actual Discord server, I love helping new people. And with Smite 2 closed alphas, they are now going into a 24-7 closed alpha. See, now, what that means is before, we were only really able to play for, like, one to two days at a time, and it would be almost every, you know, month or two. Well, now, the server is going to be out 24-7. I do want to preference this by saying, only if you have a code are you able to play the alpha. So, you can either have the alpha or the uh, founder's edition, or you can get lucky with the code if you signed up on their website. I don't really think you should bet on this, because it's pretty rare that they do that. And your honesty is way better just buying the founder's edition, so you're guaranteed a shot. Um, if you buy the founders, you get the god pack, which, um, what that does is it unlocks every god currently in the game, and every future god to ever be released in the history of smite um it is honestly really really good bang for your buck it is so worth it um i i, I cannot recommend it enough but that's not what we're talking about in this video you know i don't know how you stumbled upon this video whether you just you know saw it on youtube um if you um are coming from a friend who mentioned smite if you you know saw it on youtube randomly and you're just like "Ooh, what is this I'm here to kind of be your guide and tell you what you can and can't expect from Smite. So first off, Smite is a third-person action MOBA. Um, it is vaguely similar to like things like Dota 2 and League of Legends, but it's also very, very different in many ways. One thing being that it's in third person. Um, also, just how the game works and the mechanics and the feel is completely different. You know, you don't have homing autos, um, scaling and power works differently, rolls work differently. Really, the only thing that's similar is that they are MOBAs. Everything else, completely different. You know, again, whether you're actually going to be playing the 24-7 um, closed alpha, or, you know, you just kind of want to consume content and see what it is, what can you expect from the 24-7 closed alpha? Everything you're seeing on screen is a outdated build of the game. They have completely revamped the visuals um, and a lot of the general balance of the game. We don't have any um, video of that because it happened recently when they weren't in the 24-7 and when we weren't actually able to play the game. So unfortunately, I can't really show you that. But um, expect when 24-7 does drop, I will be making a lot more videos about certain specific topics once I'm actually able to you know, get hands-on with it and, you know, have my own gameplay and all that. MOBAs have, um, you know, roles or classes, so to speak, and they have lanes. So you have a mid lane, duo lane, solo lane. These lanes may, uh, the names may change depending on the MOBA. For example, League of Legends, duo is bot lane, um, solo lane is top lane. But they all are the same thing. Duo lane, you have two people. You have the carry and the support. The carry is typically a auto-attacking ranged character who builds lots of attack speed, lifesteal, and crit, and are often objective busters, tank killers. They do a large amount of consistent damage. The support, which is my personal favorite role and that I mean the most, is more of a, you know, brick wall. They don't do a lot of damage, but what they do is they you know, use abilities to set up kills, save their allies, use their bodies to straight up just mitigate damage. Um, and, you know, they're, they're for the team. Whether that's, you know, saving them, setting them up for kills, they are there to, you know, save someone who's out of position, who is being jumped on, who is about to die. The mid lane... Um, those are typically used for uh, mages. They have very high burst damage. So while they have a higher damage output than a carry, it's only in bursts. And that is specifically for how their cooldowns are. They can really only do a large amount of damage roughly you know, every 6 to 8 seconds. But that damage is typically very, very high. And mages, what they do best is killing squishy. So that's other mages, carries, and the jungler. Speaking of jungler, the jungler doesn't really have a lane. What they do is they roam between the lanes. 
So as you can see up on screen uh, above me, you can see that where the lanes are, there's what we call the jungle. You know, where I have all these, you know, colorful little dots, you know, the yellow, the purple, those are, that's where the jungler lives. The jungler gets their farm uh, from killing these camps. And what they do in the game is they typically farm, um, get to a high level, and when they see an opportunity, they will come out of the jungle and punish you if you're, you know, low HP, um, if you have a, an ability down that's, you know, very crucial to your survivability, if you're too far pushed up, they are there to, you know, kind of punish you for that. And then late game, they dive your backline and are, they're kind of like glass cannons, you know, they, they one shot you and ideally they want to get out, you know, they do a lot, a lot of damage and are just out of there before you even know that they're there. The solo laner is very kind of similar to the support, where they build lots of health and protections. The difference is they are in their lane alone. Um, sometimes they may have the jungler or the mid lane show up, but ideally they're in their lane alone fighting each other. This means that they get a lot of farm, and it's kind of just a big brawl fest. You're smacking each other around, trying to kill each other to get a lead, and late game, you are with the jungler diving the back line causing chaos potentially getting a kill and you're just, you're you're pretty much you're you're a raid boss it is a very uh daunting skill check role um you know if you're not good at fighting if you're not good at farming you will be punished and as the 24 7 comes out and you know i have a little bit more time to be hands on with the game i will really be releasing more specific videos uh, for these roles for gods but that's just a general overview of what you can expect from each role you know what they're what they do best and what they do throughout the game some general uh mechanics of the game and you know the feel and everything so with my two being an alpha it's gone through a few iterations already everything i say is subject to change and may not stick um i will you know make videos on you know when those happen when i feel necessary or when i feel it's necessary but so as of right now something that's new in my two that wasn't in smite one is scaling so beforehand in Smite, um, Guardians and Mages do magical damage. That's their basic attacks, their abilities. Everything they do did magical damage. And to mitigate that, you would do uh, build magic defense. Every other role did physical damage, and you'd build physical protections. That is still the case in Smite 2, but they have it a little bit different. So they now have strength and intelligence. Any god can build any of these items. Some gods can build, uh, you know, intelligence way better, but they are physical. You know, for an example, Neath being a prime example. Neath is a hybrid uh, hunter. She has some abilities that scale really well with strength, some abilities that scale really well with intelligence. So if you were to build a full intelligence Neath, she would still be doing physical damage, since that is what she is, is a hunter who does physical damage. Even though she has, you know, books and scepters and wands as her items. That is something that recently changed um, in Smite 2. Beforehand, that wasn't the case. Intelligence meant you did magic. But uh, with, you know, a little bit of pushback from the community and probably just to streamline the system a little bit, this is um, what they've settled on as of right now. So it's kind of up to you to know the damage type. The way you're able to know this really is, are they big and bulky? Okay, they are probably a guardian. Um, are they floating? Do they carry a wand? Um, are they just, you know, some mythical creature? They're probably magical. Um, you know, they carry a bow. They might be a hunter. Do they have a sword? And they're probably a warrior. So on and so on. Each and every god has a different playstyle that you're able to play. Um, some items may be, you know, more beneficial on one god while not really being too beneficial on another god. Um, it is up to you to, you know, just kind of play the god get a general feel for them, you know, play a few games and see, you know, like, what really sticks. But the sky's the limit, like I said before, you can really build anyone anywhere. You know, um, Ymir, he, if you want, you can build him attack speed crit. You can build him like a hunter. He'll still be doing magical damage, but you can still make him crit on his autos. Or you can build him full damage, so his frost breath and, you know, his ice carpet do a lot of damage. It's really up to you. The sky's the limit. Um, it is ideal that you kind of stick with the parameters of your role. You know, if you're a support, your teammate's not going to like you too much if you start building nothing but pure damage. 
um it just kind of ruins the general feel of the game the dynamic the flow and can quite often sometimes ruin a game if you're not uh confident or competent in that sort of you know off play style which is why you know i kind of give you all a brief little overview um of the rules smite is a team game you have to play with your team to be able to succeed um very very rarely are you able to you know play by yourself and get very good results now not saying that isn't the case sometimes um i've seen many many times where you know a mage a jungler or a carry are able to you know really clutch a game and either you know save it or win it but that is typically after the result of the entire team you know, a carry can't just, you know, walk into three people and just kill them all just because. You know, they have to have their abilities down, relics used, um, health bars depleted a little bit. They have to be, you know, spread out so you can pick them off more. And it's up to you, you to kind of figure out your play style and see what really fits for you. You know, are you a glass cannon? Are you a, you know, attack from range uh, auto attacker? Are you a burst mage? Are you, you know, a raid boss? Are you a, you know, team player? Do you like to heal your teammates and, you know, be there for, like, utility? And I, I implore you, you know, if you have any comments down below, of, you know, if you're confused about anything or, you know, if you're just not really too sure where you fit, um, please, please, I, I'd love to help you. Truly, I would. I often give this uh, sort of um, advice to people who are new, but, you know, think of, like, you know, an MMO or, like, a hero shooter that you play. What is a character that you enjoy playing for an example with overwatch you know do you like playing um you know roadhog okay well then you know soul lane might be for you there are many gods that are able to you know do consistent damage you know they have healing or you can build items that have healing um are you for an example like a mercy you know do you just kind of want to be there to pocket someone well then support may be for you um, are you like Genji, where you want to be in and out, bobbing and weaving? Then you might be a pretty decent jungler. But not all of this is gospel. You know, these are just very vague uh, connections that I'm able to make to another game that's popular that people may be uh, able to understand. Smite may look daunting and it may look difficult, but I promise you, it's really, really not. Compared to all the other MOBAs that are out there, it's actually very tame and very simple. And it probably has one of the uh, lowest uh, entry ceilings in the market for a MOBA. And as, you know, um, the 24-7 alpha is live and we're actually able to get, you know, hands-on with the game, um, I will be making a lot more specific uh, role videos and specific god videos. Um, you know, if any of you have um, any questions, please leave a comment down below for anything you're concerned about. You know, if you have you know, a vague understanding of the game, but nothing too major, you know, like, let's say you, you know, some of the gods, um, but you don't really quite know where they would fit, um, in a role, um, please leave a comment down below or come to one of my streams and I will be more, more than happy to be able to answer any and all of your questions. Like I said, the closed alpha, uh, 24 seven goes live the 27th. I will pretty much be streaming that day one. Um, I am a variety streamer, so I do do a lot of different games. But Smite will always be a staple on my channel and on my streams. Um, but even if I'm playing something else, please, you know, pop in some Smite questions. It's never a bad time to ask. Um, I will also have my Discord link down below if you want to be able to join that and ask there. It truly means a lot to me um, that, you know, you stuck around this long to watch the video. Thank you all so, so much. Really, it means the world to me um you can follow me on twitch i will have the link down below um you know like the video if you liked it just like if you didn't share this video around if you found it informative and you have some friends that might you know want to be able to play smite and you know they struggle to you know know how to play the game find where to get information because that's kind of where i want to take this channel um, and like these type of videos is I want to be able to help up and coming new people because like I said it's just it's a passion of mine I love doing it I've helped 
a good handful of people get into Smite 1 already, and it just, it, it, it brings me joy. But I'm, I'm rambling on at this point, I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing this all ad lib off script because I'm stupid when it comes to being able to read off of a screen. I appreciate you all. Thank you all so much for uh, watching this video. Subscribe, you know, if you want to. Follow me on Twitch if you feel like um, I'm worth it. Would really mean a lot. And I will see you all either in the next video or in the next stream. Peace out, you little goblins.